Here's how you pray. Our Father, you guys are focusing on a man and you're forgetting God, the Father. This shows you have very little to no knowledge of Christian theology. You don't understand the Trinity or the dual nature of Christ. Christ and the Father are distinct persons, but inseparable. They share the same divine nature, meaning Christ is God. The reason why you may see a focus on the second person of the Trinity, Jesus, is because through Jesus, God entered into creation to reconcile humanity with himself and to offer salvation. Jesus is essential to understanding the redemptive work and the revelation of God's nature. The emphasis on Jesus demonstrates that through him humanity gains access to God and experiences forgiveness and eternal life. Well, let me ask you this, I mean, uh, Jesus said of himself, he said, before Abraham was born, I am. Why did people pick up stones to stone him when he said that? It says in the Torah, you should know this day and take it to your heart. The Lord is God. In the heaven above and on the earth below, there's nothing else. There's nothing besides God. God is the I am. Over in Hinduism, they say that man is God. That's idolatry. Okay, you didn't answer his question. You just kind of rambled on just to bring up the low tier objection that God cannot be a man. Even though we see many instances in the Old Testament of God entering into creation in the form of a man. In Genesis 32, we see Jacob wrestle with God in the form of a man. Who do you think this man was? It was the word of God, the pre-incarnate Christ. Also, you just conceded that when Jesus referred to himself as I am, he was calling himself God. God is unlimited. God is infinite. That man is not infinite. He's limited. Again, this is just your lack of knowledge of Christian theology. If you had a basic understanding of the hypostatic union, you wouldn't strawman the Christian position so poorly. Something that is limitless can take on limited nature without losing its limitlessness, as the example of Jacob wrestling with God. If you want to understand this concept better, refer to my reel on the hypostatic union. This argument's been going on for 2,000 years. I don't think I'm going to change your mind and understand your pastor in the church. You have your book and your way of understanding. You're going to keep on saying it says what you want to say. What I would like you to learn, you're a decent human being. Go to the Father. Go to the King. You're always focusing on, I read that you say, you're here only to serve Yashka. You're here only to serve Him. Serve the Father. Serve the King. He's the one. He's the creator of all. This guy loves to waffle off long-winded answers. So the triune God is the creator of all. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are co-eternal. Access to God the Father is made possible only through Jesus Christ. He is the mediator between humanity and God the Father. As Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I believe that his teachings were true, that he is God who became man and took on a body for the purpose of sacrifice, to be sacrificed as, as a Passover lamb for the forgiveness of my sin. The Torah tells us clearly, no man will die for another man's sins. The father won't die for the son's sins and the sons won't die for the father's sins. The Bible tells us this. And you come along and say, this man died for somebody else's sins. The Torah, that contradicts the Torah. This is a common objection brought forth by Jews and Muslims, and it's one of the 613 Levitical laws found in the Torah. This might be an argument against penal substitutionary atonement, but this doesn't apply to the historical church view of the recapitulation and the Christus Victor theory of atonement. Deuteronomy 24.16 is dealing with normal criminal law. It explicitly forbids blaming the children for the sin and guilt earned by the parent. It's saying punishment should be based on an individual's own actions rather than those of their family. It says nothing about someone of their own accord atoning for the sins of others. Also, you keep begging the question by presupposing that Christ is just a man. He's not merely a man. He is God in the flesh. Clearly, this man has no knowledge of basic Christian theology. Christ is the Messiah and he is the only way.